From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. I'm Jim Donnelly. And I'm Janelle Burrell. Thank you for joining us on this Tuesday. We're going to start with that next weather forecast meteorologist, Kate Bilo, joining us with the details. We're in store for a gorgeous day, Kate. Another gorgeous day. If you liked yesterday, you will like today as well. It's a little bit warmer, not quite as windy. Now, the morning is still chilly. Ocean City, though, starting off really nice. Seen a lot of people out walking on the boardwalk there in Ocean City. The sun is shining. It is a stunner of a day. And in the city right now, look at that blue sky. A beautiful morning. Again, a little on the chilly side, but roughly where we were yesterday and winds are a little lighter than yesterday, so it actually feels slightly better. We're not seeing those those wind chills making it feel four or five degrees colder than it is. 43 right now at the airport. We still have a lot of 30s across our surrounding suburbs. You can see 35 still in Millville, but we're up to the upper 30s in Allentown and Reading, 39 in Wilmington. So while we do still have these frost advisories and freeze warnings, now that the sun is up, temps are warming rapidly and that frost threat is ending. I don't think we'll have a frost advisory tonight, but we will likely see more frost and freeze advisories Thursday morning and especially Friday morning as some colder air comes back in. But today, great weather to uh, get out and vote on this primary day. If the kids are off school because of the election here in Pennsylvania, you are going to have a great day to get the kids outside. The kids have to go to school in New Jersey and Delaware, especially we are looking at some beautiful conditions for that outdoor recess here. A gorgeous afternoon near 70 degrees with sunshine and a full moon rise tonight, but clouds are going to roll in tonight. Coming up, we'll time out some showers that could impact tomorrow morning's commute. For now, let's check on this morning's commute with Chandler. Hi, Chandler. Good morning, Kate. Not looking too bad out there in terms of the conditions, but we're a bit busy when it comes to accidents. We'll start off here in KOP in the eastbound lanes of 422. Just before the 202 exit here, you can see some activity and accident with emergency crews already on scene, block, partially blocking that left lane, but mostly just off to the left shoulder there. No major delays to worry about. We just cleared away this crash on 95 northbound just after Bridge Street. It had the left lane blocked. Tow truck had a to clear away the vehicle, but the delays, they still start right around Allegheny Ave. This will alleviate now that that lane has reopened, so that's the good news there. Elsewhere, though, 295, there's a new accident in Belmar to tell you about. It's in the northbound lanes just after the Black Horse Pike that currently has one lane blocked. The delays, they're pouring back to about the 42 freeway as you travel north on 295. And the Walt Whitman Bridge construction just joined us for the morning here. Crews are working eastbound once again, so as you travel into New Jersey, the right lane is closed. Expect some delays traveling through South Philly, Jim. Thank you very much, Chandler. So the loss was a gut punch for fans who were just so confident before the series began. Our Carrie Carrado spoke with some of those fans in South Jersey. Sixers fans watched game two go up in flames Monday night at Madison Square Garden. The Sixers now down two games in the series. A little upset about that the, after the five point lead with a minute left. Pretty upset about that. We have two more games in Philly, so I'm not that worried about it. Fans at the Philly Diner and Sports Bar in Runnymede say this game was a nail biter. They were on the edge of their seats and said they really thought the team was going to win this one. It's tough to swallow. Could have been one one, um, but it's coming to Philly now, so we'll see what happens for sure. For Knicks fans, they say it's been a good matchup so far. It's, it's, it's wild. It's, it's tense, but um, Sixers are scrappy. Fans say the health of Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey were on their minds. I'm not worried about Maxey. I'm worried about Embiid's knee. Um, I know he's going to play regardless, but like I said before, we're not worried. We got two games in Philly. So we're going to go from there. As we now approach game three, Philly sports fans are remaining optimistic and hoping the team can ultimately knock out the Knicks and advance. They say it's all going to be OK. They play well together. It's just like I don't think they played up to their standards at this game. If we don't make it out of the first round this year, uh, it's going to be a lot of turmoil going forward, I think. Fans are hoping the team can turn things around and be ready for game three in Philly. In running me, Kerry Corrado, CBS News, Philadelphia. It's primary day in Pennsylvania and Philadelphia. The district attorney's office says the election task force will be ready to safeguard the rights of voters at the polls. The police department, sheriff's department and FBI are part of the team that will investigate complaints. We know that across our nation, election officials have faced increasing risk while facilitating our elections. I want to say that in Philadelphia, we will not take any threats to this process lightly. Our public safety officials at all levels of government, especially here in the city, are working diligently together to address any possible criminal activity and prevent mis- or disinformation from impacting our local elections. 
Well, the phone number for the election task force hotline is listed on your screen. It's now open and will operate throughout the day. And here are several races that we'll be following closely in Pennsylvania today. In Bucks County, Republican Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick is facing a challenge from Mike Houck. The winner of that race will go up against Democrat Ashley Ehas in November. In the race for Pennsylvania Attorney General, five Democrats and two Republicans are running for their party's nominations. Current AG Michelle Henry declined to run for a full term. And the New Jersey primary is also coming up. Voters will cast their ballots on June 4th. The deadline, by the way, to register to vote in the New Jersey primary is May 14th. In other news here this morning, the arrest warrant for in Philadelphia for State Representative Kevin Boyle, who is seeking re-election, has now been withdrawn. According to officials, Boyle, who allegedly sent text messages to his estranged wife, did not violate a protection from abuse order. Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner says the dates for the order and the alleged violation were not within the same time period, meaning there was no longer probable cause to believe Boyle violated the protective order against him. This does not mean one way or another uh, that Mr. Boyle committed no crime. That is a matter to be determined later. Boyle's attorney responded to the withdrawn arrest warrant, saying in part, quote, this entire past week and all the media coverage around it coming in the final days before Election Day has caused tremendous professional damage to my client, end quote. Former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker expected to be back on the witness stand today for the prosecution in the so-called hush money criminal trial of former President Donald Trump. In opening statements yesterday, prosecutors accused Trump of taking part in a criminal conspiracy to interfere with the 2016 election. Defense attorneys argued Trump did nothing wrong and say some of the prosecution's witnesses they say are liars and biased against the former president. This is done as election interference. Everybody knows it. I'm here instead of being able to be in Pennsylvania and Georgia and lots of other places campaigning. And it's very unfair. Also today, prosecutors expected to tell the judge that Trump should be held in contempt over a series of social media posts that they say violated an earlier gag order. Classes resumed this morning at Delaware State University after an 18-year-old woman was fatally shot on campus over the weekend. Police say Kamei Mitchell De Silva was visiting a friend when she was shot and killed early Sunday morning. Dover police say De Silva was not a student at DSU and was an innocent bystander. They have not released any information about a shooter and are asking for your help. These crimes don't get solved in a, in a minute. Uh, it, we need help. Uh, we need information. We need anything that anybody might even not even consider to be significant. It might be significant to us. It really could have been any one of us on campus. There were a whole bunch of people outside. What was that on Sunday? $1,000 reward is being offered for any tips leading to an arrest. DSU is providing counseling and will hold a forum for students today. Philadelphia's inspector general says an investigation into the city's Office of Homeless Services uncovered no criminal activity. Inspector General Alex DeSantis says a preliminary report shows the agency went over budget by millions of dollars as part of its mission to save people living on the streets. However, the report found that the office's budget had been discarded, disregarded and services given in one year were paid for in the next year when more money was available. There is no evidence of criminal wrongdoing or criminal misconduct by any city employee. I just, this is based on where we are with the investigation thus far. And it's time for us to begin discussing this matter in an honest way that frames the right issues squarely and clearly. DeSantis has explained to members of city council that homeless service officials disregarded its budget decrease and kept spending at the previous year's level in the interest of saving people living on the street.